You're watching episode number 77 of the Handmade by Lorelei podcast. Today is January 5th, 2023. channel. <laughs> Today is Thursday, January 5th, 2023. Happy New Year. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and holiday season. And um, personally, glad that that's behind us. <laughs> so uh, it was a bit of a whew, bit of an issue trying to get together with my family for Christmas and yeah, a lot of illness and sickness and flu and COVID floating around these days. So sadly, when we were planning on going to my parents on the 24th for Christmas Eve, but that didn't happen because the weather didn't want to cooperate that week and dumped a bunch of snow and ice on us. So we had to postpone our trip home to January 1st. So I literally just had, a couple days ago, Christmas with my folks, finally, and my sister and my brother. We had a great time. Uh, but it was a whirlwind because we go two and a half hours south of here to see my parents, and we kind of did it all in one day. So we went to my dad's in the morning, and my mom, or my mom's in the morning, and my dad's in the afternoon, and then we shot back home and got home about 6.30. Now, yeah, 6.30, I guess it was. So, yeah. Um, and then the 28th, we were supposed to go to Connecticut, but my mother-in-law is very sick, was very sick with the flu. She's, I think, coming out of it now, but that trip also was postponed. So I'm um, hoping to get back or get down there relatively soon, but I sent my niece and nephew their presents and they'll be arriving today in their mailbox and so... It is what it is. Um, it's a beautiful sunny day today. It's supposed to be 47 degrees. So, it's spring. It's fake spring. It's January spring. The January thaw, is that what this is? I don't know. But uh, I'm in upstate New York, in case you're new to my channel. I'm, I'm, my, and my name is Lori. <laughs> my name is Lorelei. I'm handmade by Lorelei. I'm a jewelry designer who knits and sews in upstate New York. Don't get used to this. This look took about an hour and a half. <laughs> so I uh, curled my hair today and you don't realize how much hair you have until you try to curl it with a one and a half inch curling iron. <laughs> Needless to say, I need a bigger curling iron. <laughs> But anyway, we got we got it all curled and um, I got a little makeup so I don't look so dead and I can see the gray coming coming in strong here. That's alright. Um, let's get on with the program here. I have notes <laughs> in my trusty little uh, knitting vlog notebook. Knitting vlog number 77. Can you believe that? Um, so I kind of did an intro, but uh, you can find me on Ravelry as Lorelei Erdo. And I'm on Instagram as Lorelei Hill Erdo and Facebook as Lorelei Hill Erdo. If you want to check me out on social media. So I do have a finished object to start us off. Let me just do a rundown of what I'm going to talk about today. I have one FO. I'm going to talk about my Christmas knits that I've gifted. I'll talk about one ongoing whip. We're going to discuss the knit along that's coming up. And at the end, I'm going to talk a little bit about quilting. So if you're interested in that, stick around to the end. 
Um, if not, you can head on out after the knitting content, I suppose. But I am a maker of all the things. So that's what you're going to see here on my channel is I dabble in all kinds of crafts. Um, this podcast began because I'm a knitter. And it seemed like what knitters do. They talk about their knitting on their YouTube channels. And I like the idea of having a log of what I've knit over the last couple of years. I started knitting in, I don't know, 2017, 18, 17, I think. And yeah, I've knit a bunch of stuff. So check out my Ravelry if you haven't already. And uh, if you have any questions about anything I talk about, please feel free to leave a comment. And let's talk about stuff in the comments. I like to, I like to talk. So I finished the Big Spite Shawl by Vera Velamaki. I finished this on the 3rd of January, but I forgot to put on my Revelry project page what day I actually started this. So, um, anyway. It is very big, very long, not super deep. And um, I just realized I forgot to tell you what I'm wearing. Um... I knit this a while back. It's got a lace panel on the back. I'll put the name of it on the screen because I can't remember off the top of my head and I didn't write it in my notes. Um, yeah, so I'm just layered it over my favorite denim shirt. So anyway, this is the Big Spite. Big Spite. I used um, three different yarns, the pale, greeny blue color that you see here is autumn and indigo autumn and indigo fibers and the color is blue ridge the orange is magpie fiber magpie fibers swanky sock in mesa and the brown is bare naked wools fingering it's called stone soup so I knit this on a US 6 needle. It took a while, it took a while. This is a predominantly garter and brioche stitch. And it starts at this end and gets wider and wider. The the brioche was super easy. It does have a couple of increases, decreases, decreases. But they were very easy. This um, is short rows here. And then this big brioche section took a long time. That took me a long time for some reason that was it is a pretty big section now that I'm looking at it. This last border section didn't take any time at all. Those are short short rows. Um I love that it's like reversible too. Like it looks really great on the back side as well as the front side. So when it's all wrapped up around your neck, you know. It looks really great. Um, Vera recommended, I'll just talk about this briefly because it was kind of I think if you're going to knit this shawl, it's important to know, and I'll probably put this in the show notes eventually, or my um, project page notes. So in the pattern, sh when you're doing these short rows and you have to go back through and pick up your wraps, the wrap and turns, 
she said that you don't need to pick them up because the garter will disguise them. Well, this is what happened when I did it that way. Um, yeah, that's pretty glaring. So from there on out, I picked up the wraps and I got this look, which to me looks a little bit cleaner. And I obviously didn't go back to fix that, but it's, you know, it's fine. But um, when you're looking through the shawl, you can really see it. <laughs> you can really, can you see the holes there? Yeah, but whatever. Um, oh, anyway, it's finished and yeah, it was a fun knit. I recommend it if you're interested in brioche. So that is my finished object. Now I'm going to put some pictures on the screen and talk a little bit about my Christmas knitting. I did knit a couple of Christmas gifts. One I knit actually last year, I think, was a hat uh, called the Beeswax Hat by Amy Vandalar. And um, I knit it in this really bright pink color. It's awesome. But it's not something that I've ever worn or... I didn't see myself wearing it on a regular basis, so I ended up gifting it to my sister for Christmas, and she loved it. She put it on and did not take it off until, actually I never saw her take it off. <laughs> so she might still be wearing it now, who knows. Um, but she loved it, and uh, it looked great on her. It was just her, it's her perfect color. It's just like that bright fuchsia pink color, and she'll stand out, and uh, um, yeah, so. That was one. Um, the blurry cowl I knit. The blurry cowl. <laughs> the blurry cowl by Hohi Locatelli. My mouth, my words today. Um, I gifted to my friend Teresa for Christmas, and she loved it. She put it right on. She. It was the blue and gray cowl. I'll put a picture in. Um, turned out great. I knit that specifically for her and um, she loved it. So I was happy to give that to her. Um, and then the Hilly Hood, which I just finished recently, you would have seen in the last episode, I believe, by Ann Vensel, I gifted to my brother for Christmas and he loved it too. So I have, he's very knit worthy. He loves being outside and he um, benefits from mohair and he loves it. So <clears throat> That Hilly Hood had some mohair. Actually, no, Surrey Alpaca. Yeah, that hood had Surrey Alpaca. Super soft. And also, it might have even been a cashmere blend of the yarn I... From Little Fox. Did I say anything? Let's see. When I talked about that. Yeah, Little Fox yarn. Arctic Fox DK. I don't know if that... Um, it might just be a merino. But anyway, here's a picture of him trying it on. And a funny picture of my brother-in-law, who also tried it on. So those were my Christmas gifts. Huge hits. Um, I want to gift more knitting next year, I think. Just because it's building up here. I'm just knitting and knitting and knitting and there's just piles and piles of knits. So I think a lot of people are going to get shawls next year and um, I'm going to clear, clean out the stash. But I definitely want to make some mittens and those will also be great gifts. So there's a really cool pearl soho mitten pattern floating around. Those patterns are free, I think. And um, I'll put a picture in here for you. But I want to knit those in that really bright yellow that I just got recently from... You ever 
film a podcast and oh, yarn covered. You ever film a podcast and you're like, this is going to take too much editing. It would be almost easier to restart. I'm halfway through now, so I might as well just keep going. Uh, next, I'm going to talk about my current work in progress. I am back to this hat, and I'm trying really hard to finish it. This is called the Pom Pom Chevron by Mariana Martins. Martins. And I'm knitting it with Knit Picks yarn that Milen gave me. Uh, Knit Picks palette yarn. Milen knit this same hat. Her color patterning was a little bit different than mine is. I think she started out black and then went to green, brown, black. I don't know. So here's where I'm at so far. And I'm loving it. Loving it. It's going to be so stinking cute. Uh, so I'm back to that and hopefully finish that relatively soon. Even though it's called the pom-pom chevron, I don't plan on putting a pom-pom on it. I'm just not a pom-pom person. But yeah, it's going to be really cute, although it doesn't match my winter coat, but that's okay. And I love this yarn so much. This is so much softer than I thought it was. I don't know why. I don't know what I thought. I don't know that I've ever used this yarn before, but I will definitely be buying it again because it's really nice. It's, uh, let's see, what is it? Uh, this green is called Ivy. Um, and then, I don't know, this is black. And actually, this is one that was over dyed, so this one is not something you could buy at the store. Milen over dyed it because it came and it was a little bit too bright for her, so she she over dyed it. Anyway, it's 231 yards per 50 gram ball. And it's um, just 100% Peruvian Highland wool. So I don't believe it's super wash, but uh, it's relatively inexpensive and really nice. Like this would be a really good sweater yarn, I think. Although it's fingering, but um, yeah, so that's my work in progress. I'm keeping that in one of my Danica Studio bags, which I think matches the colors of my hat perfectly. Oh, and I wanted to say that this is the hat pattern here. And you can see it's a little bit different. They have a main color in between each of the stripes. But Milen didn't do it that way, and I'm doing it just like Milen. So we're just I'm just doing um, six repeats of each stripe. And then... Yeah, hopefully... Hopefully I'll finish that soon. That's basically the bottom line for that. I want to talk about the knit along. So Milen and I are going to host a knit along in February. Her, She's coming back to visit me again and we're going to do another podcast together. I know you're excited. I'm excited. And she's coming, like, toward the beginning of February. So once she's here, we will officially announce the start of the Knit Along. We are knitting a shawl from the book 52 Weeks of Shawls. You can also buy the pattern directly from Claire Walls, the designer, on her website. And if you sign up for um, her newsletter, I think you can get 20% off. I don't know if that's still happening, but, um, I ended up buying it, not realizing I already had the pattern, but that's fine. So I'll be able to print it out and I won't have to use the book, I suppose, which will be good. But it's the Hyrus Shawl by Claire Walls. 
Heareth. Heareth. And I'm excited because I was digging around for a while trying to find yarn for the shawl. The shawl is big and requires quite a bit of yarn. I want to say 1,200, 1,200 yards plus. And uh, requires a DK weight. And I kind of wanted to do it in kind of a rustic-ish yarn, but soft. So I ended up finding this yarn on webs, yarn.com, if you've never been there. And both Milan and I chose to do the shawl in this yarn. And because for four skeins, which each skein is 100 grams, 382 yards, so you only need four, um, came to like $51 USD. This is Milan's color. My color is green and it's not here yet, it's coming today. So if I wait to upload my video, maybe I can shoot some video of it when it gets here and then throw it in the video. Okay, my yarn came. Here it is. This is the Juniper color. Um, trying to get a good idea of the color of it. Um, yeah, I like it. It's really nice. But mine is called uh, Juniper, I think. And hers is Boysenberry. And this is it. It's really, really soft. It's really nice. It reminds me a lot of the palette. Has very similar feel to it. Might be a little softer. And super economical, so. And quite a few colors, and I will definitely be buying this again because $16 a skein for 382 yards is not bad. Would be good sweater yarn too, in case you're thinking about knitting a sweater. Yep, so I, the reason I have her yarn is she had it shipped here and she'll pick it up next month when she comes to visit, so. As long as everybody stays healthy, my gosh. <laughs> uh, and now, let's see. I'm just going to end the episode with some chatter about quilting. And so if you're not interested in that, I'll see you guys next time. And if you are interested, stick around. So, um, if you're new here... I used to work at a quilt store. I worked there for two years and I got laid off at the start of the pandemic and never got hired back. So when I left, I had to go and pick up all of my samples that I had in the store. And I had a lot of things on the go there because I was constantly making samples. But the problem was I made a shit ton of quilt tops, but I just never got them sandwiched and quilted and finished. And I have a big pile of them here. So I, a goal of mine for 2023 is to get some of this stuff finished. I mean, come on already. So I pulled out a table runner that I had sitting in that pile and I went to town yesterday and I um, I went to the store, I bought some spray adhesive, you know, basting spray. I had quilting, what is it called? Batting, I had some batting on hand and I picked out a backing so I didn't have to like buy any fabric or anything like that. Well, I did, I ended up buying fabric for the binding for this particular project, but I pulled out the, I'm sorry, the sun, I'm just in, the, in a bad spot here. 
So this is a, it's a table runner. However, the blocks are kind of situated where this is the top of each block. And if you can see, they have little faces and I fussy cut each of those faces to be in the center of the blocks. So that this top was all done, but I have since quilted it. So here's what I chose for the back, which um, that's color representative right there. It's like a dark purple. It's got coral, light blue, um, this peach and this gold color, which I feel like brings out the colors in this. Now, this isn't purple, but it reads kind of purple. It's more of a brown. So I got yellow and peach and gold and coral. And then the background is like batik. I love this fabric so much. So I did all the quilting myself, which I'm very proud of myself because I haven't done that at all, hardly. I, when I worked at the shop, I did the quilting on the big, huge sewing machine, the quilting machine, um, the free arm, that's what it's called. But on a domestic, I'm just, I'm not that, I mean, I've done like little projects, but never like a big quilt. And this is, I thought was a good place to start. So... I just did some basic stitching around the blocks and I did all the blocks first and then I just went through and did X's on the, the blocks next to each. Super simple. That's more than enough quilting for this kind of a project. I probably could have just let it go and not do any quilting here, but I just, I went ahead and did it. And I'm glad I did. So, isn't it cute? It's so cute. This could be hung on the wall as well. Um, I should think about that. I could probably put some loops on the back to fit on a dowel or something so that it can hang. But um, it is a table runner, so I don't know. Maybe I'll just leave it. And then, um, so I, I didn't have any binding in my stash that would really go. So I ended up going to Joanne's and I found this. So this is going to be, this is going to be my binding. I love it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> So I'm really excited about this. And however, I am really having to relearn a lot of these techniques, like how to make bias binding. Bias binding um, is just, it's cut on the 45 degree angle so that it's a little bit more malleable. And it's a little bit easier to work with. But you're cutting it like this, and then you have to like piece the piece piece the pieces together and it's been a little bit tricky so I may just piece it vertically you know just a straight do a cut straight off and then just piece the pieces together because it's it doesn't matter you know that's probably what I'll do but this fabric is perfect perfect for this it's a little busy on the back, but that's okay. That's okay. So, yeah, I am so excited about this. And it's turning out really great, and I'm really happy. And it's really fun to switch gears and do something different for a change. I'm feeling a little bit burnt out from jewelry at the moment, so I figured I had to do something different. Also, I finished my table runner. Look at that.
the binding came out perfect. And it looks so great. I just love how it turned out. And I think I'm going to put this in my store to sell. Yep. Um, I'll show you another quilt top that I think might be next on the list of things to finish. Not like bed sized, it's more like lap sized. But the colors are really pretty. It's perfect springy colors, and I love the fabrics. These birds are my favorite. Well, it's upside down. Yeah. So this is next on the list. This might be a little trickier to do the quilting because obviously it's more fabric to finagle through the sewing machine, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I think that's all I have to talk about today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And let me know if you have any questions or comments in the comment section below. It's been a pleasure getting back to doing regular um, podcasts from the hectic December daily vlogs that happened here. I don't know if you watched any of that. <laughs> um I've had a couple people tell me that they wa they watched all of the vlogmas, so I'm like, oh, I mm, really? <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. That was a lot. I don't know if I'm going to do it next year. Uh, I think I will do it next year, but I don't think I'm going to worry about vlogging like life in general. It got really boring, you know? I just, I live a very quiet life. Joe and I don't have any kids. We do a lot of cooking at home. We have very separate interests, so we're not doing things together all that much. And yeah, just for Vlogmas, it's boring. We didn't go anywhere. We didn't do anything fun, really. So... Um, I'll probably just focus on opening my advents because I definitely want to do advent calendars swap next year again with Milen and um, that will be really fun. So I'm going to focus on doing that maybe instead of just regular vlogging. I don't know. We'll see. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, if you liked it, go ahead and subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Um, yeah, subscribe. I put out a video like once a month and, um, ish. Sometimes, sometimes there's hiatus, hiatuses, unplanned or planned, but yeah, I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy. See you on the flip side. Bye.